Hey, hey guys, what's up? It's been a minute since I recorded an episode, but once again, I don't really just record without anything to say, right? What would be the point of that? (laughs) Then again, people do things just to produce content to keep engagement, but not necessarily have any substance or anything of value. Um, but I hope that's not found here. (laughs) I hope this is providing some sort of substance and value. Otherwise, what would be the point of releasing recordings of episodes, right? So, I've been up this morning. I couldn't really sleep. Um, I had some gas that was bothering me and it woke me up and kept me up for a while. Excuse me. (laughs) And, um, I'm recording from a different location again. (laughs) So, you will hear the sounds of life. (laughs) Um, I guess that's a good way to put it, right? Life continues regardless of what you stop to do. So, the church has been on my mind. And, um, I was realizing that growing up, I had no idea what the church was or what it looked like. I wasn't necessarily in the design of God's church. Um, I wasn't in the design of the fivefold. Or so I thought, right? And so I didn't know what that was supposed to look like. I didn't even know what that was. I thought that that stuff stayed in the Bible. (laughs) I didn't, you know, know apostles and prophets, um, teachers. I didn't think, I didn't know, (laughs) I didn't have a thought to think that they were commissioned, right? According to the Bible. What is it? Second Corinthians. Is that Second Corinthians? So let me. You think Corinthians, y'all? You see the first is Second Corinthians. I was gonna go to thirteen, but I feel like that's the love, um, the love chapter, <laughs> the chapter that everyone quotes at weddings, right? Um about what love is. Oh, well, no, it's definitely not Second Corinthians 13. Definitely, definitely not that chapter. Sorry. Um, maybe it's First Corinthians 12, First Corinthians. That's why I think this is talking about the gifts. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's talking about the gifts. But, (laughs) the fivefold is the gift to the body of Christ. (laughs) Go figure. I didn't know about the gifts to the body of Christ. I didn't know how many gifts we had, okay? I didn't know about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I definitely didn't know about the fivefold apostle. Well, now I should say fivefold. That everyone knows about pastors um, because those are the people that, right, are in the church, on the pulpits. Pastors. I knew of pastors, and I guess I knew of evangelists to a certain extent, but not to the entirety because those I considered the people that would be. Um, outside on the corners of the streets that always seemed crazy 
I'm like, what are you guys doing out here? <laughs> yeah. Yelling. Those were the people I considered that I saw yelling at people. And I was like, that cannot be an effective method of ministry. <clears throat> This was my thought back then. And that's how I perceived them. And actually, that's probably because that's what I saw. It just seemed like they were yelling at people instead of talking to them. Now, this is a long time ago. So, like I said, just growing up, what I saw, what I witnessed um, in my little bubble of the world in Long Island. <clears throat> um, and so... Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Right? Fivefold. Five different operations. All to serve the body of Christ for the perfecting of the saints. It's in the Bible, y'all, please. It is. Just. You don't have to take my word for it, but it is. <laughs> I'm like, where is it? Lord, why can't I remember where it's at right now? Anywho, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 talks about love and the gifts. <clears throat> and obviously the greatest gift is love, right? And because God's greatest gift is love, he gave us these gifts. I consider the operation of these offices, right? Their offices, gifts. On top of Holy Spirit's spiritual gifts. <clears throat> Which is, you know, speaking in tongues, gift of interpretations of tongues, working of miracles, and so forth and so on, right? <clears throat> and it got me to wondering, right? If I didn't know what the actual body of Christ was or experienced it what was that reason and why did church look so much like culture and look like the world that i never noticed a distinction and which it in which why it was so easy for me to not know the difference because i knew the world i knew the world I was definitely a part of the world. I didn't know what it meant to truly be set apart, right? How I grew up, it was a um, <laughs> form of being set apart, all right? <laughs> but <laughs> it was all religion. <laughs> it was all religion. A form of godliness, denying the power thereof. <clears throat> all religion. And so I had to learn about relationship and I had to learn about my purpose and my calling and why I was here. And I was sitting this morning and wondering why I went to so many different churches. Why couldn't I just be in one church? <laughs> Go figure, after coming out of religion and not wanting to set foot inside the four walls, uh, four walls of a church, I was sent to many different ones. And I found a church that I liked and I thought it was gonna be home at the time. Um, and then I got sent to a different church. <laughs> um, I had found a church on my own. I wasn't sent there. This one church, before I went to the church that I thought I was gonna find home, I had went there on my own accord, finding, looking for, um, a church looking for a home that's what it was I was looking for a home mm, a place to belong <clears throat> and so I had went to this particular church and um, didn't stay there long and then I got sent to a church that I didn't want to go to that's how you be known as God sometimes. Because a lot of times, it's not something that you want to do. <clears throat> and I actually told the Lord I didn't want to go. But I'll obey. I'll be obedient. You know I'm going to go. Because you said to go. <laughs> but I don't want to do this. I don't want to be here. And <clears throat> go figure. The Lord knows what you need. Right? 
That's why he's God and you're not. (laughs) And that's why he's a good, good father and he sees all things. And then after that church, I went to another church. And I got to notice the differences and the similarities in a lot of these churches. And I got to notice a lot of culture in the church. But I didn't see a lot of the hunger and desperation, the transformation of <clears throat> people coming in bound and leaving free. <clears throat> now, mind you, I wasn't at these churches long, but I was expecting to see what I saw at the core meetups and what I saw at the core retreats at the churches. And it was sort of disappointing because I wasn't seeing that. And to me, it should be like that every service. The people should be so hungry and so desperate for God, right? Those that are coming in that are seeking God while he may be found should find him and not necessarily saying that they have to go to a building but you should be drawn to where the presence of God is right especially in a big gathering of the assembly of the body of Christ the presence of God should be so strong it should be or two or three are gathered, he is in the midst. It should be powerful. It should be healing, deliverance, freedom. Demons should be cast out and be uncomfortable. And I'm actually seeing the opposite. I was seeing, because I grew up in that, I, I didn't really understand it at the time, right? Just comfortable sitting on the pews. <laughs> Just full of sin in the world. There was no distinction. So it was easy for me to just sit in a service week after week. Come in the same, leave the same. Get a hit of a feel-good message. But not enough to sustain and maintain. And of course, that also comes with relationship. But that's the point of the fivefold. The equipping of the saints that's why it's put in place it's not a one fold ministry it's not a one man job we were designed to be community and a community is many different functions many different roles one focus one goal right one body many parts We're designed this way to help each other because even the weakest member has a function and a role and that's where the parts that are weakened get strengthened by the parts that are stronger to help each other, to uplift each other, to hold up our arms when we are weak, when we are tired, to band together to help, to hope, to build, to equip, to correct, to warn, to instruct, to tear down faulty systems, to build firm foundations, to uproot the things that are planted by the enemy, and to restore and redeem. That is the love of God. That's what and who Jesus was, is. Everywhere he came and he went. (laughs) There was a change. There was a shift. Right? If you look at his ministry, he met people like you and me. Told them and showed them who they were that they were called for greater. He 
he healed all manner of sickness and disease. You weren't left the same when you met Jesus. And I'm talking about when he walked the earth. The people that met him weren't the same. Notice I said met him. Because as we saw with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they couldn't tell who he was. They didn't know him. (laughs) They just saw a man. They didn't know and see him. They didn't see love. They didn't see the answered prayer. They didn't see prophecy being fulfilled. They saw a man. They lived by rules and laws and didn't have eyes to see or ears to hear. Hmm. When did the call? When did the church become so cultural? When did you need a marketing plan to get people to come into services? A production team? Lights, camera, action. When did you need trunk or treats, fall festivals? pumpkin patches to get people to come in. Why are you trying to get the people to come in instead of operating in the fullness of what God commissioned you to do and him drawing the people to himself? Right? If we lift him up, he'll draw all men to himself. He gets the glory. We are chosen as vessels to steward his glory. We don't have control over it. And that's if he chose us. Because nowadays people are self-appointing themselves as pastors. Which is weird to me. (laughs) I don't want to self-appoint myself as anything. (laughs) I always ask the Lord, who am I? Why me? I didn't even know who I was. But I said yes to a call. And I'm still learning myself. I'm still growing. I don't want to try to be something or Someone I'm not. I've lived most of my life that way. Trying to fit in. At the same time, not trying to fit in. Not realizing that I was called to be set apart. (laughs) That's why I lived like that. So it wasn't something I had to try to do to be separate. The Lord knew once I said yes, it was just going to be an automatic thing. (laughs) Cultural Christianity. We are the salt of the earth. People should be gathering to meet God, not the most popular pastor or minister. Or not because 
you can operate in a gift. I didn't really understand what gifts without repentance meant until I saw some things. (laughs) Until I experienced some things and then I understood what that truly meant. You can have the biggest platform our smallest and operate in the gifts of God. There are nine spiritual gifts. I mentioned this before. And then I did call the offices the fivefold gifts to the body of Christ. You can operate in the gifts things without repentance. You can work the miracles. You can heal the sick. You can raise the dead. These are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can interpret tongues and so forth and so on. We can operate in these gifts. And then there's that terrifying scripture (laughs) that says, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Hmm. You can draw men unto yourself with your giftings, with your talents. You can definitely steal the glory from God. Hmm. (laughs) You can steal the glory from God. And not repent. Hmm. But here's the thing when you truly love the Lord more than the gifts. When you desire to please the Lord and be obedient and live a life of holiness and righteousness and purity, the great thing is the Holy Spirit does a work in you and you change. And so... If you were giftless, giftless, talentless, if no one knew you, if you didn't have a platform, a following, a ministry, would you still love God and love his people? Would you still worship him in spirit and truth? Would you still bless those that persecute you and pray for those that despitefully use you? Would you still be kind to your neighbor? If no one knew your name, if no one helped you, if no one held up your arms would you still love and serve Christ would you still do what he's asked you to do Would you still praise the Lord? 
sing unto him a new song. Give him the glory because he deserves it. Even if nothing made sense, <clears throat> and sometimes it doesn't, it's life be life and <laughs> I guess that's when you realize whether you truly love God or not. Hmm. <laughs> The priest he prays for me. Hmm. 